Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are, welcome to uh, Dumb SEO Questions, episode 368. Uh, each week we meet here to uh, review the uh, questions uh, and answers uh, left on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have uh, Richard Hearn. Richard uh, is um, um, a, a triage triage doctor for uh, higher echelon sites. Um, is, that, is that a fair description, Richard? Yeah. And um, you can uh, find Richard on at redcardinal.ie. Um, Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. He's based uh, in the UK. I should have mentioned that Richard is based in uh, Thailand and uh, also sometimes you'll find him in Ireland. Um, Masataki uh, is a Google product expert uh, in the uh, AdSense uh, community. And he lives in Wimbledon, a uh, suburb of London. Um, Tim Kappa is based about 100 miles north of uh, uh, Masataki. He's in Corby. Um, he is webmaster of, um, uh, sorry, CEO of onlineownership.com. And Tim is also a Google product expert uh, in the Google My Business community. And David Rosam uh, is a, a leading internet marketer. He's based... Uh, in West Sussex, down in the sunny south of uh, the UK. Um, and um, of course, it's, it's, it's um, uh, sunny. Yeah, I can see it coming through the window, David. Uh, no, no. Now, that's what you think sun looks like in the UK. Mm. That, yeah. that is greyness, that is. <laughs> okay. So we've got nine questions tonight. Uh, number one is what to do after switching from dub 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 to um, um, non dub dub from non dub dub to dub dub dub. I'm sorry. Um, Jared Gucci said I've just changed the site to load with dub dub dub. What do I need to do with Search Console and any redirects? George G. Um, um, by the way, I must point out people like George G. who uh, uh, answer questions uh, through the week and, and make our, our dumb SEO questions uh, Facebook group such a valuable resource. I wonder, did this person, did they supply George G. with their site or else? Because it seems like he checked something. He said redirects seem to work fine. Canonicals too have the dub dub dub. Although I would put the HTTPS just to be sure. Google recommends the absolute path. Other than that, seemed like Google has started to pick up the dub 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 URLs. It'll need time, unless you don't go ahead and re-index them manually. So he must have looked at it. He must have had the URL. Uh, I put a comment in. I think the only things you. Some of the things you want to look for are just your internal links. Make sure they all point to dub dub dub. Your external sitemap. Make sure it's all dub 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 URLs. Uh, anything else like feeds you might have. Canonicals should be dub dub dub, uh, and that should that should do you. That should be enough. And then the one thing I would suggest, if it's taken a little bit more time, is to create a temporary XML sitemap with mod date now for all the URLs in your site. Submit it to Google and see if they'll come by crawling the the URLs to see to see all these signals that you've got right. Just takes a little bit of time, I suppose. That's all. Yep, guys, you you didn't tell me that um, uh, I failed to share uh, the the. Um, the question, the, the printed part of the question. Sorry about that. Right. 
Yeah, it should be working now. Okay. All right, let's um, go now to number two on our run list. It's from Sanjay Cannon. Um, please give me a hint on how to uh, bring traffic to my website. Uh, Sanjay said, uh, I'm new to this group and also to search engine optimization. Recently, uh, I have installed Yoast uh, SEO. Kindly share any best practices to be followed and also please give me a hint on how to bring traffic to my website. See, Richard Hearn uh, left the first response uh, on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Just to give contact, context again, because it's not there in the run list, I, I linked to the Yoast site, I believe, the, their, their knowledge base. So that's why I said perhaps check out the website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, in broad brushstrokes, get your, get your technical stuff done right. Make sure your site's working properly. Make sure you've got, uh, you follow all the, the hints uh, on the Yoast site for setting up the Yoast, um, uh, the Yoast plugin, um, and then get going. Write content, write good content. Um, writing good content is a is a, a week's uh, uh, a, a week's class in itself. Um, so I'm not going to do that now, but I would say get your technical stuff done, um, get um, get Yoast work uh, set up properly, um, and then forget it. Focus on your on your content and get lots of good content on there. Um, yes, that's that's the, the kind of short brief hint. Um, you know this whole this whole um, group is about SEO and I'm sure I can't even attempt to uh, to cover everything that we cover week in week out but um, yes that's that's broadly the way I go about uh, optimizing uh, working with any site I make sure it's working technically and then I I work up some some good content for it I'll just say, call me a skeptic, but whenever I see a question like this, I tend to think that it's not real. It did cross my mind. It did cross my mind because uh, Sanjay doesn't have a face. It's, uh, the content of the question and the lack of face does rather worry me. Yes, we've, we've had a few in the last um, week or so. Um, I, I don't think it's a, a particularly smart, uh, but we, we get a, a few self-promoters, also a few trolls who um, probably um, you know, they don't want to see us uh, being as popular as we are. Um, it's, it's not our fault that we're loved so much. <laughs> anyway. Jim, you are a cuddly koala. You are. <laughs> um, all right, let's go to number three on our run list. And it's um, from Lolo Shot. Uh, he said, I am in the downward phase with 400 visitors a month. Um, Lolo said, Good morning, all. I hope you are well. I have an e commerce site that runs quite well, five figures a month. Um, however, on the SEO side, I'm in the downward phase with, with 400 visitors a month and I have a main competitor who has 1,500 a month. Uh, to put it simply, it is located on all the keywords concerning the shop um, in um, first position and I am also on uh, all of these words uh, but in second place. Um, if someone can give me his outside opinion for 
two or three tips it would be very nice uh, have a nice day everyone so what's he saying he's in position one or two um and based upon based upon what is the suggested user uh, searching for that 1500 a month he's he's like getting 400 visits so that's what he's is that what he's saying no he's saying his competitor is getting one and a half thousand a month uh, how does he know what his competitors getting does he have access to analytics oh um there are various third party tools that would uh, which are nowhere nowhere even near they they also base it on you know the relative search queries which none of them take into account the fact that position one literally should only get about 33 percent of what those that, that those numbers are and it and it decreases percentage wise as you go down in the SERP um 400 a month sounds about right for the 1500 on position one but what i would start working on is so you know what i would start looking at is so let's say you're in position two they're in position one whatever um i would start looking at longer tail queries that's that that um um that will intersect the user um during their 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 purchasing phase you know not many people automatically just search search for a type of shoe um unless they're aficionados you know like me I, I i buy a pair of shoes maybe once every like 10 years um so when it comes time to replace you know uh, a pair of my brogues uh, that can't be rehealed again um i'll be like looking at you know um i'll be i'll be doing a, a bit more searching around so who's currently making brogues who's using real leather um things like this so rather than just focusing on like you're already in position two yeah you can look at fine tuning things like this for to, you know to push to position one but um i would start looking at satisfying the query uh on, on people be searching for uh, now i don't know what particular type of shoe that is in position one so let's say it's a i don't know it's a patent leather brogue so you're going to start looking at different things. So, and and when when I say um, it, it could be, you could be doing video content on 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 the type of shoe, um, what it goes well with, you know, what kind of style does it fit? Is it a, a wingtip or or whatever? Um, does it fit with other types of shoes within the? Uh, does it fit with other types of shoes? within like the range uh is there a latest style like i don't know did kanye west just turn out wearing a similar type of shoe obviously his may have been real leather but yours is patent you know yeah look so it works well with this kind of style so you know you you want to start intersecting and catching people within <laughs> You want to start catching people within their research phase. Very few people, once they get to the last bit of their research, will actually, you know, um, will normally hit or whatever. You want to try and get them in between the research phase. So uh, those are obviously longer tail queries. It could be video. It could be normal content. It could be fashion content um, where you start broadening and larger yes you may only get you know 10 20 30 visits on those a month um but you're you're starting to build brand affinity through the user's purchase journey when they start researching uh, or start looking around for new shoes so that would be my advice on this one 
I'm going to hazard a guess that it's a really niche product, given that he's number two and his, he seems to have one competitor who's number one. I don't know what it could be. It could be like, I don't know, those shoes with the the shoes with the built-in lifts in the heels or something like that. You know, it wouldn't surprise me. The koala uh, leather ones. Yeah, yeah. The, well, no, they're only available in Australia because the export restrictions. Yeah. That's what I heard. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's it's a tricky one. This he's got to try and figure out what what can make his side better than the competitor. You know, it's it's a not an easy one when you've got a two horse race, um, and they could have a lot more resources than he has, and yeah, they could be selling more or less identical products. So, but, um, sorry to interrupt, but is is position one or position two really that different? You know, I mean, uh... it is when it's a two horse race. You know, mm -hmm. like if it's if it's, if there's ten, like if, if really there are, you will get some products where you'll go looking, and there's only there might only be like two or three or four suppliers of that product, even in in somewhere as big as America. There's some very very niche products, and in those cases, yeah, one or two, it is. It's a the, the two horse race, and it can be a big difference then. Um, you know, I've seen it. I've seen it in some cases. But the upside to it is that if he's already second, it means that there shouldn't be that much in it to get to, to hop over the competitor. It might take a while. I'm not going to say it's going to happen overnight, but there's, it's probably he's got less competition to, to worry about. So that's probably a good thing. But he should look and see if there's any sort of gaps that he can identify in terms of the content and the user experience on both his and the competitor side and see if there's something, some gap that he can fill or something that can grab him a bit more attention or some way that he can provide a better service in terms of the, the visitor experience. And then he might be able to, to, to hop over the, the single competitor. It's a tricky one, but he's got to be careful though. You know, this 1500 per month that he's probably got from some tool, as Tim said, when you're at those sort of volumes, the tools that are that are predicting traffic, they tend to be woefully inaccurate. So I just be very careful about that as well. Yeah. Okay, any more? Let's go to number four on our run list. It's from Jack Rock. Um, beginner questions about on-page SEO. Jack said, hi, we have a multilingual business to business page, um, brackets, English and three other languages. And um, I wanted to, to ask a couple of beginner questions about on page SEO. We have English speaking uh, SEO guy, a search engine optimization guy who is helping us. And I try to understand how to split the task between him and uh, other potential consultants. Uh, one, uh, I guess for the keyword slash content related uh, search engine optimization, I should use uh, SEO consultants who are fluent in one of the languages my site is translated to. Um, yeah, I, th I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, he said uh, then, uh, and I guess the rest of the on-page optimization, such as page speed, I can just use an English-speaking consultant. What is usually the best strategy to do search engine optimization for a multilingual site? Michael Martinez gave some very good answers there. I have to say again, we should thank him again this week. Michael is the best. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Come on, Master Taki, you're the translator, yeah? Well, I agree with Michael, so <laughs> I, I don't have much to add. But, you know, food for thought. For example, when you have um, CJK, well, CJ, actually Chinese Japanese language site, for example, then 
you might want to use web fonts. Now, there's a trade-off. You know, that's going to slow down your site. But at the same time, it's going to ensure that your site looks OK across different devices and different browsers. If people are not aware of that, then that person might say, well, don't use web fonts. That's going to slow your site down. Don't use it at all. That might make sense in certain circumstances, but it might not, depending on the locale. So even for technical stuff, you really do want someone who is local or localized. It's a good point. I hadn't thought of that. The only thing I'll say here is that I have a little bit of experience of doing this and also of engaging multiple SEO agencies in multiple countries to do it. And I can just say one thing, it gets very expensive very quickly. So, um, yeah, if they have the money and they can afford to engage SEO consultants, then the, the second part of that is actually finding the right consultants, especially in some of these smaller countries. It can be very, very difficult to get to get people who are reliable and who provide a good service. Uh, but, but definitely, you really want to have the, the best outcomes are going to come from native speakers in each of the languages you're trying to target. Because, yeah, they do have to be able to go and look and they have to be able to use the keyword tools and figure out what, what people actually really do use in the native language. So it, it's tricky. But if they can afford to get multiple consultants, they probably should. The second question, the, the, the most of the technical stuff in general, apart from the very good point that Masataki made was, uh, you know, you don't really, it doesn't, being a very good uh, consultant in terms of, of the technical and the speed optimizations, like language doesn't come into it. It's just technical know-how. So go for it. If you find somebody good, I wouldn't worry. As long as you can communicate with them, that's all that matters. Excellent, Richard. All right. Um, let me just look at this thing that I saw last week, if I can see it. No, I can't. Um, where is it? Yeah, there it is. Um, and lo lovely comment. You know, the two like, section either on the side or the bottom. Now, he could just be meaning uh -oh. actually within the Stop. body copy of the actual thing. What are you doing, Jim? So if it uh, wasn't body copy. Anyway, well, look, I, I, I couldn't find the right button to press to stop your dulcet tones booming out over the broadcast, Tim. Um, but um, anyway, I just wanted to point out that you know, each week, or not every week, but sometimes, uh, uh, with, I got a comment, and then the comment last week was that great content, bro. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I like being thought of as bro. <laughs> um, I'm sure you all do, but um, yeah, it, it's great to get uh, a, a comment. Yeah, um, sorry, Dave. I, I'm just gonna pass that on anyway. Let's go to the next. We're on number five on our run list. Um, Ross Raffin said that um, he asked a question. It's titled, when citations would um, result in inconsistent name, address, phone numbers. He said, I have a client um, name marketing, um, which is a division of name communications. They have separate phone numbers and staff. Neither has a Google My Business page. Um, <clears throat> and communications uh, knowledge panel is populated from Wikipedia. Marketing has no uh, knowledge panel yet. And uh, marketing is too new to be notable enough to deserve its own Wikipedia page. But we may be able to get a link from communications uh, Wikipedia page. I'd like to do citations for marketing, but a, a quick check shows that communications already has citations all over the web and they work out of the same address. 
how do I establish marketing as an entity when citations um, would result in inconsistent name, address, phone number because communications has the same address? Okay, so um, the way I would basically work this is, so they work out the same address, but it's not technically the same address, um, uh, or shouldn't be, um, in, in the sense for GMB guidelines. They should have their own entrances. So although they work out of the same address, um, they should have their own entrances or at least access um you know like a desk for customers that arrive there so i would separate the two within the address so is one suite 405 and the other suite 404 um uh, can you separate them out by the suite you know they you're going to have to because essentially if you put them both on the same floor in the same building um you are going to run into a little bit of an issue if there's a manual check and uh anyone cannot actually determine that they are separate businesses so the way i would work it is firstly i would decide on what they are i mean they may already be in different suites so uh, call it suite one or might, well, someone might be on floor one or floor two. That's even easier. Um, but I would define those firstly. Um, so let's call it, you know, suite one and suite two. Um, I would update the sites firstly with their address. So the communications takes suite one, uh, marketing takes suite two. Uh, you update the GMB for communications, suite one. Um, you haven't got GMB yet for suite two. Or in fact, I don't think you said that either had. That's fine. Update the sites first. Then I would update um, the citations that exist out there for communications. Um, the, the, the big ones. I mean, I wouldn't really bother going down the road with the shitty ones that have popped up like free directory dot com you know um you know update the aggregators to suite one for communications um and once you've got those aligned then you can uh create the gmbs um with suite one suite two and your citations uh, when you when you create them for you know marketing or communications are going to be um you know properly segmented like that. Obviously the name is different. Uh, the address has got a slight, uh, you know, the slight differentiation in it. Um, both sites reflect the correct addresses. Um, and they're obviously going to have different telephone numbers. So from apart from that, it'll be, uh, it'll be fine, but I would do that. The legwork first, fixing what is out there, decide on how you're going to segment them and then do the legwork on that. Thank you, Tim. All right, anybody else on this one? Okay, let's go on to, uh, looks like I think it's about number six on our run list, is it? Yeah. David Gaskin, um, who gave us that epic um, um, question and answer um section last week um david gaskin said uh, or asked a, a, a question titled expanding the the traffic source beyond the province uh david said uh, hey as search engine optimization dudes i'm wondering how you might take a dot ca or canada uh, domain um, and that gets a lot of traffic in the province it's located in and expand its traffic source beyond the province and ideally uh, go into the US and beyond. The .com domain is already registered to who I'm not sure yet, but I'm sure that that would uh, do a lot to help. I also wonder if providing my business address on Google and on my website is a good idea. 
In retrospect, I suppose it worked in driving traffic from my home province to my website, but my goal has changed, so I imagine I will be removing it from the site and changing it to my Google My Business settings. Is there anything else you think that I'm missing here? Uh, thanks a lot. The address on his website probably had very little to do with, with him getting the traffic, just to make that point. I hadn't noticed that, actually, that he had said that, but I noticed he said he was thinking of removing the address. I don't see any upside to him removing an address at all, either. Um, he's on a Canadian domain. It can do well internationally. It's not that it can't do well, but generally it's not going to do well, so he probably wants to, yeah, maybe create a second site on .com or migrate his site to .com and have a CA folder and maybe a US folder or something like that. Uh, but having the address not going to make a lot of difference. The GTLD, going from CCTLD to a GTLD will probably help. Uh, his .ca domain probably isn't going to do very well in the US unless he's very niche and there's no competition for it in the US. So, yeah, I put in a lot of comments in there already, but... Uh, yeah, he didn't come back again, so he did. He actually came back to ask if he redirected a .com to his .ca, would it make a difference? And I answered to him, and the answer is not a jot. So he's got to do a lot more than that to, to make it work. Google's not going to take any notice of that, that, that tactic. Yeah, I think what Richard's saying is, is absolutely right. I can just add a little to this over the, uh, the .ca and the .com issue um a while back i had a client who um for reasons i cannot remember uh, had a .co.uk um and wanted to uh, target um a number of countries that weren't the uk um and insisted that uh, that the that they weren't going to change that um and i did some work um and as i suspected it didn't uh, I could only get them ranking so far. Um, and I'm pretty sure that that's down to the fact that they had a .co.uk and Google were reading it as uh, a UK-based business and trying to sell um, UK-based services to Germany or Australia. Just, you know, they just didn't cut it. So, um, yes, I, I would certainly say, you know, if you're serious about... Uh, going beyond um, what your uh, your your geographical um, your your geographical restrictions, the the ones implied in the .ca, um, you're going to have to uh, you're going to have to get uh, a .com or something similar. Um, it really depends on what what you're doing long term, what you want to do, what your business strategy is, but. Um, you you will almost certainly uh, plateau with uh, .ca. Yeah, just imagine the important point here is that you can geo-target a GTLD like dot .com or .net, but you cannot geo-target a CCTLD outside of the country that, that CCTLD belongs to. There's some limited cases where they allow you to, but yeah, in general you can't. So that's that's the big reason why .ca, you cannot geo-target to the US, it just doesn't work like that. So he needs to probably can reconsider his domain strategy if he wants to expand and, and target other, other, other nations. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, let's move on to number seven on our run list. Uh, it's from Nick Rosens. Um, titled low quality offsite content um nick said thanks for adding me i'm working on a website with some nice high quality content and blogs written by the employees of the company now we are considering to let some articles and blogs uh, to be written by an indian seo team uh, this content will be of lesser quality than the current content so my question would be, why, why, why bother? 
Um, he said, is it an option to publish all of this content offside? Um, but of course, linking to the website to keep the content onside high quality. Uh, don't do it. I don't think um, I would want to do it. Like, it's worth mentioning there's more I answers in the. Think what you've got to be asking yourself, Nick. Like, So you're literally saying to yourself, we are going to be, because this is going to be low quality, right? We don't want this associated with our, our um, brand, right? But now I'm going to post it offsite and still be associated with your brand. Like, why would you even do that? I mean, forget it, like, off-site and then linking it. But do, 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 do you know what I mean? Why would you even do that? Why would you potentially create low quality crap that may or may not be read, but if it does get read, it's associated with your brand. Like, just don't do it. You know, if you're thinking, okay, we've got X budget and we can get X amount of content. Well, half that content, get better quality, you know, and then, and then put it on your own site. I just, I, I, I don't get it. I don't get why you're even thinking, I want to create stuff that is going to potentially, I don't want to associate with my brand, so I'm still going to publish it off-site, but still link it to my, my brand. It's, it's worse than that, Tim. You know what this is? This is just pure junk for link building. So the, the run list doesn't have all the answers, but he actually goes into a bit more what he has is an SEO agency from a Southeast Asian or an Asian nation, I won't mention, and their plan is to write this content and to put it onto third-party sites with links back to his site. And, yeah, this is like, it's pretty shocking that any anyone would, would be promoting this tactic in this year um never mind 10 years ago uh this is just low quality off-site content low quality it's just zero quality it's it's negative quality it's, you know just don't do it it's it's unbelievable that that he's even considering this it's not going to work even if it does work for a while it will probably come back and bite him on the ass Yeah, it, it, it is. It, 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 it is nuts. It really is. Like, why would you? <laughs> so, here, here's a tip for you, Nick. Sorry. So, here's a tip for you, Nick. Get yourself someone in house, or, you know, you might be the guy. Make sure your site is optimized. And then, you know, use the budget that you pay in these cowboys to get a quality writer in just for one article in a month on your own site that is going to provide value to your site to your readers to your customers okay you know just get rid of them i i i just you know use that budget you, you're going to be, be paying them and even if that's the value of one you know quality european written uh article um per month then 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 that's one per month going onto your site but it's providing value to your to your customers um or, or to your product or your brand i'm like you know what we should though, probably have I, I far even, more value i wouldn't even outsource that why doesn't he just continue get buy-in from from his bosses to actually get the people these employees the company who write these articles before get buy-in from the boss to give yeah. them some time to do this, to do one, one a month or two a month or three or even one a week. And yeah. that, it will, it will, it will reap dividends in the end because they're, what they're going to write about is going to have so much more expertise than having a third party, maybe get a third party to review it and to rewrite it and maybe to look at some of the keyword insertion, whatever it is. But get the people with the expertise to write this content. I mean, invest in that. I mean, yeah. just, 
uh, you know, it's it certainly I, the last thing I would invest in is is in this tactic. There, there are probably 101 other tactics that they could invest in that will probably have a better return than what he's talking about here. I can't think of a worse thing you could do than what he's suggesting here. Yep. Can't, that's it. Can't think of a worse thing to do. And that's absolutely true. All right, let's um, move on to number eight on our run list. This one from uh, Ollie Burt. Uh, it's titled, What Do You Struggle With Mostly as Beginners? Uh, as beginners, uh, what do you guys struggle with the most? Um, when I started out, it was link building. I love keyword research now, but I didn't at the start. Cool flags, I just hate them, said Richard Hearn. Um, yeah. So, I've, and funny enough, I've answered a few of these things in the last week for some reason. A lot of people are going on about like link building, and I suppose, uh, and if so, there's an uptick in link building crap, spam, and everything ever. Do you know what? I've honestly never, yeah, okay, maybe in the 2000s, but I've honestly n never, um, I've, for the last 10 years, I've never bothered with link building, ever. Um, in the sense that I've gone out and tried to look for, uh, you know, a, a link coming in. It, there, there was other ways in terms of link building where, you know, you, you're building up a reputation, et cetera, et cetera, and people are requesting for that, that, that company, client, whatever, if they can contribute to something or if there's a, you know, it's just reminding businesses like if they've been asked to um, provide support to something, just, you know, then you're reminding them, hey, you know, we want, we, you know, we want to mention back from their, um, we want to, we want to mention back from their site. But, but apart from those basic, like, good, sort of good practices to remember to ask or, or to look for, or to look for, you know, utilize um, what you have available to you that already exists. Um, I've, I've never bothered with link building. Yeah, the, the, I mean, there are the, the only people that really uh, are excited talking about link building are, are those bastards that sell. Um, <laughs> that they sell that send you the list. I've got, I don't know what is going on, but I'm getting 20, 30 emails a day at the minute from like, hi, this is my high quality, oh, you know, DA of freaking 82. I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I like Dave Elliott. And now we know. Now we know Richard hates cornflakes. Can we add in for me there? I hate koalas. <laughs> Why? Why? What's wrong? They're beautiful, furry, cuddly little animals. They're gorgeous. They're, They're not. Those koalas. They're I not. They syphilitic, ass eating little bastards. <laughs> Do you have, do, Jim, do you have a way to beep some of this stuff out? You know, I mean, <laughs> okay with, this, with this type of discussion, you know, I mean. <laughs> I, 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 I do, um, Richard, but I'm old. You know. when, we, when we agree at the beginning with all these, you know, with these terms and blah, 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 do, I don't believe do any of us agreed that we would be associated with this type of discussion. <laughs> I mean, Anyone who's really considering taking on, you know, this guy, Tim Kapper, for his SEO, like, they better be, you know, realize that they're going to get some really dodgy sort of conversations about koalas, you know? It's yeah. okay with that. He seems okay. But... I guess, I guess the, the proof is in the pudding, and you're the one with the Australian clients. That's true. <laughs> That's it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a point. I'm going to rank for... Cephalitic ass eating furry bastards. <laughs> I, I think somebody must have beaten you to the to the to the jump, uh, Tim. 
<laughs> All right. The website now. This is a niche market now. We're going to convert the world. You know what? I'll tell you what, on a more serious note, I tell you what the main, like just, okay, I gave a, a silly answer to that one, but the most difficult and complex things that I come across these days, uh, probably HRF Lang because everyone thinks it's simple and it, it, it ain't, not at scale. It's, it's very, very tricky. And the other one that it was actually mentioned in that is structured data. And it is actually, it's not straightforward, you know, it can be quite, it can be quite tricky to do structured data and also to build any sort of internal knowledge graphs for, for businesses, which is quite a hot area. But um, they're the two areas I think that are the most complicated and complex these days for SEO. Sorry, I know you've gone forward, so I'll let, I'll I'll step back. <laughs> Chris Green asks our last question for the evening. Uh, uh, it's titled "The Best Approach for International Search Engine Optimization." Uh, Chris said, "Hi guys, we have an e-commerce store whose main customers um, are US sixty percent and forty percent from Australia." The domain is a .com. The site is small with six categories and about 20 products per category. I'm not sure what would be the best approach for uh, international SEO and competing in both markets. Um, we could uh, create the exact same site in the .com.au market and geotarget.com to the US only, uh, but this will be expensive to maintain. Uh, any advice or tips on how to navigate uh, both markets uh, um, successfully for SEO? There's quite a lot of overlap with this on actually question six with the .ca and the .com. It's, it's, it's not a dissimilar uh, scenario. Um, He's on a .com already, which is good news. He's on GTLD, which can be geotargeted. You can geotarget with subdomains or subfolders. Uh, really, the best thing he wants to look at is maybe to see what his CMS supports, what he can do out of the box, what he can do simply. Keeping stuff in sync isn't that, it, it, not always as difficult as it, as it sounds. Sometimes the CMS will handle that for you. Uh, I'd be inclined to, to look at, at rebuilding the site as in two sites within the same on the same domain. So one for US and one for AU and have something like domain.com AU and then domain.com slash US and actually building a site on uh, for for two for two uh, locales. That's the way I'd go about it. And depending on the CMS it might be easy and if he's got a an odd CMS, maybe it won't be easy at all. But he's going the right direction. I think he's going to get some good returns if he gets it right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. All right, uh, when I click this button, I'm going to see, yes, it is. Thank you for watching time again. Uh, before I go, I, I must thank uh, the people who answer questions on our Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group uh, uh, on um, uh, the, 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 the people that, that uh, make uh, Dumb SEO Questions uh, such a valuable resource, and we thank them so much. People like Michael Martinez, Michael Stricker, Dave Elliott. Um, and of course, um, I must thank you guys, uh, um, Tim Kappa, David Rosam, Richard Hearn, and Masataki Wasa um, for uh, turning up uh, every, every week. Um, and uh, uh, in some cases, uh, every week for five or six years um, or more. Um, anyway, we'll be back uh, at the same time uh, next week um, to do this um, 
all again. Um, but for now, it's good night and thank you very much.